learners, we are back and we will be looking at paper one, geography. Uh, we are looking at climate and weather as a broader topic, but we are going to be focusing particularly today on weather changes along the fronts, because that is the playground for the examiners. You just have to master that part. There's no winning. You just have to master that part. You can't get away from it. Now, um, my approach is that I will be using various platforms to tackle this from synoptic weather charts to satellite images and maybe a little bit on newspaper geography so that you can be able to broaden your knowledge as well and even feed into how to analyze an infographic. So we will spend some time looking at that. Okay. Let us look at this synoptic weather chart. Um, You can see that it's a very heavily summarized chart and it will cover quite a few areas that ultimately focus on the weather changes. There's a weak pressure gradient that is illustrated there. And how do you tell if a pressure gradient is weak? Remember, grade 11, pressure gradient, pressure gradient force, those concepts. So we are now going to be looking at the isobars. You can see very well that they are well spaced. Isobars are far apart from each other. So you either say it's a weak pressure gradient or you can say it is a gentle pressure gradient. <coughs> Look at that. Getting closer to the weather along the fronts. Look at the isobars, very, very close to each other and that is a steep pressure gradient. Now, behind a cold front, the pressure gradient will be steep. But what does that mean? It also means that there will be very strong winds. <clears throat> Those strong winds are going to be behind the cold front. Now, there is A here that you can see. A is supposed to be labeled as a cold front. So now, what I'm driving at here is the mid-latitude cyclone is a system. But then you must also be able to identify parts of the system. So that is a cold front, okay? So A there is a cold front. You see the symbols, small triangles that are symbolizing a cold front. Now let's look at B. B is a warm front. Now if you look at it, the symbol is different, okay? Those are half moons, those are half moons. The half moons are symbols that represent a warm front. Now let's get deeper. Look at that. That is now in the warm sector. Look at the weather station there. It gives you a northwesterly wind. What does that mean? It means the wind is coming from the northwest and going to the southeast. Remember the lever that is there is showing air as it flows into the weather station. So from the northwest to, to the southeast. Now, there's a whole lot that we can say on weather in the warm sector, but I'm going to be touching on it a little bit later. Let's look at weather behind the cold front. Southwesterly wind. As I said again, the lever there for wind will come in from the southwest into the weather station. So that is a southwesterly wind. So the wind moves from the southwest to the northeast. That is the wind behind the cold front. Now remember, the weather, the wind there will be very, very strong because of the steep pressure gradient. Now, let us look at a deeper analysis using a satellite image. Now, that is, if you look into GIS, that is an image, that is raster data. 
So you've got to understand it as a, an image or as a picture. Now, what are we seeing here? We are seeing clear skies over the interior of South Africa, maybe some light clouds over Gauteng, Mpumalanga, maybe a bit of Northwest. But I'm more interested in this thick band of clouds. Those are heavy clouds, cumulonimbus clouds. Very, very distinguished because they are grouped together like that, forming a very, very clear line. Now, in a satellite image, that represents a cold front. Now, I've tried to put some triangles there as a symbol for the cold front. Now, let's look at the right-hand side of the image. There you see very whisky clouds, light clouds, high cloud cover, and those are actually referring to the warm front, okay? Now, we are going to come to the weather, but we are just looking at the parts and how to identify them on a synoptic weather chart, okay? The apex of this system is out of the screen, more south. But I have put a label there so that you see where it is. Look at that. That is a low pressure, okay? Mid-latitude cyclones are low pressure centers, okay? So you must show that when you do your analysis. Now let's get to the movement. Mid-latitude cyclones move from west to east. Remember, the examiner is going to request you to go deeper into that and say, perhaps, account for the movement of why is the cyclone moving in a certain direction. Then you can say they move from west to east because they are in the westerly wind belt or they are carried by westerlies. Westerlies move from west to east, so they are carried by the westerlies. Okay? Now let's look at weather in the warm sector. Okay? As we said, when we're looking at a synoptic weather chart, there is a northwesterly wind there, okay? Because it is coming from the northwest and going to the southeast. Remember, this is a warm sector, so the temperature is going to be high. There's a high temperature. And there'll be very few clouds. I don't like the concept of saying no clouds because it ties you up. Rather be smart and say there'll be a few clouds, okay? And even say light clouds to elucidate your point, to make it clearer. Now, the lesser your cloud cover, the lesser your precipitation. So there'll be less precipitation, okay? Now let's go to the cold sector weather, okay? There'll be a southwesterly wind, meaning wind coming from the southwest. Now, that wind there is in the cold sector, and therefore there is a low temperature or you can say temperature drops, okay? Now, high cloud cover there relates to heavy cloud cover and clouds of vertical extent. And the only acceptable example of heavy cloud cover in the exam is actually the cumulonimbus clouds. Let's break that down so that the next point makes sense. Cumulonimbus, break it down to Latin, cumulo, dash nimbus. Cumulo means a heap of. A heap of. And then nimbus in Latin means rainfall. So if you interpret cumulonimbus clouds correctly, it will be a heap of clouds that produce rainfall. So that's why the next point is heavy precipitation. Remember the positive relationship? The heavier the cloud cover, the heavier the precipitation, okay? Now, I want us to look at how to analyze a newspaper. And this is fairly recent. If you're looking at it, it is on Monday, July 12, 2021. That is very important. And that's where we start, okay? Now, when you get a newspaper, you first look at the date. And in this case, remember, mid you cyclones occur throughout the year. They occur throughout the year, but they affect or they influence the weather of South Africa, mainly in winter. So you can see the date fits in very well with that description, okay? Monday, July 12th, and that is 
in the middle of winter. Okay? So that brace for cold, wet weather is the forecast of the article. But from a geography candidate perspective, things should be falling into place now. Okay? Brace for cold, wet weather this week, and it is winter. So you have reason enough to suspect that we are going to be talking about mid-latitude cyclones, but focusing mainly on the cold front. Okay? Now let's look at the little note on the side. Side note, if you want to put it that way. Okay? It's likely to be wet, cold, and miserable in many parts of South Africa for most of the week. So you can see the side note there matches the forecast, and the forecast matches the date. Okay? Now let's go further. Look at that. The weather elements mentioned in this article are the weather elements that you need to look at when you are looking at how to analyze weather changes along a cold front. Okay? So let's see what the weather elements are. Okay? Gale force winds. Gale force winds. Remember we said behind the cold front, there'll be a steep pressure gradient, meaning there'll be very, very strong winds. So gale force winds qualifies that, okay? Extreme cold, that is low temperatures, okay? Snow, meaning heavy precipitation and extremely high waves. And the high waves are the direct consequence of the gale force winds, meaning the fetch, referring to the fetch, the distance traveled by the winds out at sea to be able to create the waves. Now, let's look at that. These are the conditions that can be expected in the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, Northern Cape provinces for this week. That talks to the scale, the scale of the effect of this. It covers most of South Africa. And therefore, the provinces that are mentioned are just about as large as you can estimate. So the bulk of the country is likely to get this weather and it will affect people living in those areas. Then finally, you get the newspaper mentioning what it is that it is talking about. A cold front is predicted to hit Cape Town on Monday morning. But why Cape Town? Remember the Eleanors, they move from west to east and therefore Cape Town is on the western side of our country. So they are likely to hit Cape Town first, more than anything, okay? So we have identified the weather phenomenon. It will be the mid latitude cyclone, and the part that is focused on is a segment or a part of the system called a cold front, okay? Now, look at this. The waves are going to be high, up to 6.5 meters. That's not normal. Those are very, very high waves, okay? And that part, meaning movement from Cape Town past Cape Agalhas to Honderclep Bay and then to the Plattenberg Bay. Now you can see it is moving from the western side right through to the eastern side. So the Plattenberg Bay is most probably the last town in the Western Cape before you move into the Eastern Cape. So there is mobility there, there is movement from west to east, okay? Now look at that. All the circles that we have there are focusing on the weather. Now I'm going to look at the impact of that weather because when you are analyzing any weather phenomenon in geography, you've got to focus on the impact of that weather either on people, either on the infrastructure, either on the physical environment, which is the natural environment, and even go further to talk about the impact possibly on farming, agriculture, and so on. But in this case, specific mention is made of even informal settlements, because there's quite a lot of them in the Western Cape, particularly in Cape Town. Now let's look at the first bubble, okay? High tides can be expected on Monday and Tuesday with a possibility of infrastructure damage being caused along the Western Cape coastline. What is the infrastructure? 
Now you are talking about your roads, your bridges, you are talking about your structures, which means buildings. You are talking about electric pylons that move power around the country. That is infrastructure. So you can see the impact already. Now let's move to the next column, okay? Look at this impact. The weather service says this may lead to the loss of vulnerable livestock and crops. Vulnerable livestock and crops, okay? And the weather is going to be very dangerous to farmers. When we talk about livestock and crops, we are talking about farmers, okay? Now let's take the last bubble. For forecasters warned of rain leading to flooding in informal and formal segments. Now, what we want for the exam is for you to qualify that rain to be heavy rain leading to flooding, okay? This is a focus for the examiners. So please make sure you understand and master the impact that this, this weather phenomenon will have on all the sectors that I've mentioned. Now, that is newspaper geography, and that is how to analyze a newspaper article. You will probably get something similar if you look at how the question paper is set from 2020, 2021 up to now. There will always be a part on the infographic that refers to an article, an extract, a newspaper, a graph, and all that. So please approach the exam well prepared, okay? Look, that's the impact we're talking about. Now, dear learners, we are done for this one part.